Well, welcome to uh, all the participants of our webinar and our uh, our uh, meeting uh, wherever we are going. I understand we're on YouTube Live, and um, you know this this technology stuff is a great answer for a guy like me who's such an introvert. Um, I don't like to leave my office and. You know, I'm nervous about even my coffee. Actually, that's the big problem is my coffee maker was here, so I stayed here. Um, however, I do want to take just a moment. I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Ozer, and he can give you more information about uh, follow-up webinars we'll be having. Uh, we have a, a nice speaker with us today. We have uh, Max, who's uh, uh, a Ph.D. from Iowa State, worked there a bit as a postdoc, but is now in uh, and at, has dabbled in academia. Uh, some of us have more than dabbled, Max. We, we've been out here until we're just old timers, man. I've been here 28 years. But, um, but he's now working Occidental Petroleum as an applied mathematician and a mathematical science so, scientist. So I'm looking forward to hearing the questions you have and maybe asking a few questions myself. Uh, before we turn it over to Max, Oz, or Dr. Ozer, sorry, do you have uh, some uh, information for these folks for upcoming events? We have three events, uh, two events, in fact, other than this one, uh, lined up. Um, one is scheduled to October 24th. Uh, we're going to have Dhanaraja Kasinathan uh, from Qualcomm, and he's a senior uh, data science scientist. I know him from uh, Canada, University of Waterloo, when I was doing my postdoc. He was our uh, in research team. So he's a great speaker, so hopefully you're going to enjoy uh, him on the 24th. And we have another speaker, uh, Amir. Um, he's a data science uh, consultant from Databricks. And, and I know him from the same research group uh, from Canada, University of Waterloo. Um, so again, he's a great guy. Um, I'm sure he has a lot to share. And also, let me just put the next semester's uh, upcoming uh, tentative events. Um, so we will have... Um, Someone from your company, Max, um, actually two people from your company. Um, so Jesus, uh, Jesus and I has the same academic dad <laughs> from Iowa State. So uh, we had the same advisor. So he's a kind of guy like he was doing control theory, but switched back all the way to industry. So we were, in fact, working on similar topics that time. So we have Reza. Um, he's a senior director of advanced analytics from Oxy. And he was another PhD student back in Iowa State, and he's the one, again, switching back to industry. And he also has an engineering degree as well. And we have Korai uh, Karabina. Um, he's an associate professor uh, at Florida Atlantic University. Um, I know him, again, from University of Waterloo, Canada. <laughs> so he, was a, he was a postdoc over there uh, working under somebody else's uh, direction. So uh, we have all, all, all of these events already scheduled. Uh, we are still working on the exact date for each event. Um, and, and hopefully we're going to have one more person scheduled uh, for next semester. Uh, uh, his name is Tassos uh, from Brown University. So I'm still negotiating with him to pick the right time and the right month uh, to, to have him. So, but these are all events uh, that are already scheduled. Um, um, and, and let's just like um, start uh, with Max. Uh, he gave me a like, very short uh, bio. Let me just go with that and I'm just going to pass everything to Ryan here. And Ryan is the person who's going to moderate the whole uh, uh, conversation with you and getting the questions and so on. So uh, Max uh, started his PhD at Iowa State University in 2008 and he spent five years uh, for his PhD in applied math. Um, I think we, we had a lot of interception over there, at least like two or three years of interception when I was there uh, doing my PhD. Um, and then he got accepted as a postdoc from the same university, Iowa State University, for one year till, uh, till uh, 2014. And he got a position at University of Denver as a, as a visiting assistant professor. So you may think that he was going to go in the direction of academia uh, by looking at his CV, but all of a sudden... Uh, he got a job from Oxy in 2018, and he's there since 2018. So, and he's originally from Donetsk, Ukraine. Correct, right, Maxim? Yes, that's correct. correct? Okay, awesome. So, and he studied also at, at Donetsk uh, National University before he get to the States. Um, so, why don't we start? So, Ryan, that stage is yours. So, and then I should probably go back to the PowerPoint slides for him, right? Okay. I can sit now. 
Yeah, um, thanks, Oscar, for inviting me um, and for the introduction. Um, so, uh, as Oscar mentioned, uh, I studied together in Iowa State University. Um, Oscar is a few years senior than me, and uh, when I finished my first year in graduate school, Oscar was training a group of young graduate students to take qualifying exams in applied mathematics. Uh, there were 10 people, and everyone passed qualifying exam, so Oscar is a terrific mentor, and uh, you guys are lucky to have Oscar as a professor. Um, so um, I um, spent a few years in academia before switching to industry last year, actually it was two years ago, and uh, it was actually not an easy decision, you know, because um, I like teaching. I spent um, eight years teaching college mathematics, and um, there are like advantages and disadvantages if you compare uh, academia and industry. So you can move to the next slide, please. Yeah, so I was thinking about uh, whether I should uh, stay in academia or move to uh, the industry. Um, it was um, more than two years ago, and uh, eventually I decided to try um, try my abilities in uh, um, oil and gas industry. Uh, so uh, two years later, um, I, I actually quite enjoy uh, working in the industry. And the reason why I chose oil and gas was uh, because um, one of applications of my uh, PhD dissertation was about uh, oil exploration. So it was about uh, high frequency wave propagation which um, can model with the subsurface. And I was always curious what are the applications to the real world problems. Um, Oscar, please move to the next slide. Yeah, so this is uh, us. Uh, just this, earlier this week, we went to uh, the oil field. So you can see in the center, there is my good friend, Jesus Martinez from Iowa State. Uh, so we were visiting um, West Texas area where some drilling and completion work was done. And um, yeah, I was uh, communicating with Jesus because he got to industry one year before me. And uh, I asked him, how, how is it going? Is, is there any, you know, mathematical applications in oil industry? And he said, yeah, it it's works very, uh, really well. So he's using a lot of his skills that he learned in academia. So it is a perfect place if you want to transition from academia to industry. Um, so there are a few uh, things I would like to tell you about um, uh, some skills that are uh, sufficient for you to be successful in academia or in industry, I should say. Um, first of all, um, you need to have a good academic background. So what you study in university will help you a lot in, in, at your work. You know, your attitude, your understanding of the theory, whenever you start working on a new project, um, your general knowledge of um, science and mathematics is very important. Uh, the second um, quality uh, for you is um, uh, coding, the knowing programming languages. Uh, so this is very important for uh, different, uh, you know, uh, different reasons. First, you want to translate your knowledge into into languages that computer is understanding. And second, you want to know how to um, how to promote your results, how to make it available to the users that don't have, you know, strong background in, in mathematics or statistics. Well, and finally, you need to be a good communicator. So communication with your colleagues with different uh, backgrounds is, is very important. So your communication skills is something that I'm still working on. Um, uh, this is something that you can benefit a lot. So be curious, um, talk to people with different background. You can learn from them. You can explain some sophisticated things in a simple language. So this is something that um, you need to practice. Um, let's see what is next. Well, the next thing is um, 
I would like to tell you about your mind, mindset when you prepare yourself for career in industry. Uh, that uh, first of all, you need to uh, continue learning after you graduate. So you need to be open-minded. Um, you need to uh, understand that most of the projects that you are working on are multidisciplinary. So they involve uh, skills from different fields. So you need to be comfortable going outside of your comfort zone. Uh, so uh, it's something that um, that helped me to uh, to work um, to smoothly transition to the industry. That whenever I see some project, most of the time I I have no idea how to do that, but I know that well, there are some people who know something about that, and eventually I can uh, get more comfortable with uh, some topics that I was not familiar and uh, make some you know some improvements and uh, uh, be successful in in completing some projects. Okay, um, so this is something. I want to uh, share with you also, you know, your patience, your ability to focus is very important. And you need to be passionate about your work. You know, um, our work hours start at 6 a.m. So you need to be patient to, <laughs> to wake up so early to go to work and uh, just be happy at your workplace and, um, you know, make friends with your colleagues. Um, so... Um, uh, the next thing uh, I would like to tell you a few um, a few things about um, applications in industry. There are three main applications that so far I I'm dealing with. The first one is um, all those buzzwords about machine learning, deep learning, data science, AI, and so on. So <clears throat> it's um, something that many people want to work in, but you you do need to have a good background, good understanding of statistics, and uh, you, know, you need to know how the things are working before you um, uh, start uh, doing some projects. Because you know many people, well, when they play around with the data, they say, "Oh, I'm a data scientist." That's why um, my manager Reza Rastiga from Iowa State he said, "Well, I don't like this." Um, name data scientists, you need to tell I am a mathematical scientist, so you are a statistician, so you need to um, uh, make sure that uh, you are actually uh, understanding the theory very well. And here is a small picture about the um, life circle of, um, stages of life circle of um, uh, data. So first of all, there is a need for business. Um, from business uh, people, they want to uh, assign you some uh, some data to study because there is there is business interest. And uh, uh, there may be some uh, disadvantages. You need to be aware of disadvantages of artificial intelligence. Uh, first, uh, for example, the deep learning is is a really amazing. A technique, however, it's very difficult to interpret. There is like some magic going on inside uh, that um, the better the model, the more difficult it is to to explain it to the general audience. And uh, in the other uh, departments, business units, there is a fear that the artificial intelligence can replace human being and you will be out of work. Uh, so we try to explain our uh, engineers, co-workers, that uh, you have nothing to worry about, that we are providing you with extra tools to to make you more powerful, so we want to complement you and uh, augment your abilities to uh, to deal with data, to make better decisions, to save money. Uh, so um, it's not like we have artificial intelligence that will eliminate your work. Uh, so we want to have this um, more friendly attitude towards uh, high technologies.